Good morning. Today at Toronto Police Headquarters, I would like to introduce Acting Chief Mark Saunders. He will be providing the update on the Joint Forces Investigation Project RX and Battery. Uh, good morning, everyone. And as stated earlier, this morning I'm just going to give a snapshot of uh, the activities that has occurred over the past couple of hours. And tomorrow there will be a more comprehensive uh, explanation. So Project RX is an investigation that was led by our Gun and Gang Task Force, supported by the Ontario Provincial Police Weapons Enforcement Team. And it was focused on a gang in Toronto known as the Sick Thugs. And in concert, there was another project that was working uh, as well called Project Battery. It was led by the Asian Organized Crime Task Force, and it was a multi-agency unit which is made up of officers from Toronto, OPP, York, Peel, RCMP, and the CBSA. And they're focused on a group called the Asian Assassins Gang based, on, based in Toronto. Now, both gangs are allegedly rival gangs and uh, each have been involved in a series of shootings that have occurred within the city of Toronto. I can tell you that it's alleged that uh, this investigation has gone on for quite some time, uh, close to a year, and this morning at approximately 5 a.m., a total of 53 search warrants were executed by a multitude of uh, police service agencies, and I'll read them out to you right now. Uh, Toronto, Peel, York and Durham regions, um, as well as Waterloo, Guelph, Windsor, London, Hamilton, Belleville, South Simcoe, Halton, Branford, Niagara, and RCMP. As stated, the bulk of these warrants were executed in Toronto. However, there are others that were outside of the jurisdiction of Toronto. Uh, to date, what we have is a total of 50 people that were arrested as a result of the warrants that were executed uh, this morning. And um, 30 people have been arrested uh, sorry, 50 people arrested today, but prior to today's takedown, a total of 30 people have been arrested for um, incidents prior to today's takedown. Uh, a number of drugs and, and uh, guns have been seized. Uh, today we've seized approximately 10 firearms. Uh, large currency of uh, Canadian cash, cocaine, heroin, marijuana, and a, uh, two cocaine presses were seized. In the arrests that have led up to today and including today, there have been a total of approximately 30 firearms that have been seized. Uh, the people arrested today will be facing criminal organization related charges, trafficking firearm charges, firearm possession and drug trafficking, as well as human trafficking, armed robbery and conspiracy to commit robbery. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Superintendent Dougie Kwan and Inspector Gordon Snedden from organized crime enforcement agencies will be doing a full uh, detailed uh, release and they'll have displays of some of the items and have a more drill down of what the outcomes of this particular investigation was. Have any homicides over the last year and a half planned to these, either of these projects? I can tell you that that is something that has been looked into and, and to date I can't give you a full account as to what the answer would be for that. Can you say which homicides? Like there was the Yorkdale homicide where Asian assassins came up. Yeah, I, I, I don't know Tamara. In line with that, can you articulate um, if uh, murder charges could arise out of these approach of these raids? Well, I'm, I'm certainly not, would not be surprised if that does happen. I, I can tell you that uh, these two rival gangs were in incredibly ruthless. Um, and uh, the one thing that uh, I, I can tell you with this particular investigation, with most street gangs, it's a small geographical footprint, but in, with this particular group, uh, their criminal footprint was quite large and it spanned right across the city for the most part. The city or beyond the city as well? Like, uh, and beyond the city, yes. Are you surprised that um, some of the addresses that were targeted were in higher end neighborhoods? Uh, no. There, there, I have no problems with any socioeconomical uh, uh, um, it, crime occurs with, with any crowd. So it, it doesn't have to be low income. It can be any income and, and, and we've seen that. I'm sorry, I don't understand your question. Like, uh, does it say anything about, um, like, perceptions of security in those areas? Uh, perception? 
Well, when, when you look at the areas that we police, um, any time that we see that there is any type of security uh, issue, then, then we work in partnership with the various communities and try to resolve those problems. You said that one project was focusing on sick thugs, the other one on Asian assassins. Did they, at one point, did they just overlap and then they became part of the same project, or can you just explain how that worked? Well, there were, there were two individual projects, and um, the, the interesting factor to this is that both gangs are rival gangs. Um, that's part of the reason why the, um, the processing took place in various divisions. We, we've got a responsibility not just to make the arrest, but also to ensure that the people that we do arrest are kept in a safe environment. So um, the people are processed in different divisions across the city because of that. Assassins at 41 Division, Sick Thugs at 31 Division? Well, I'm not going to disclose the locations, but I'm going to say that they're all at different locations so that there is no uh, uh, safety issue that may present itself. Well, so Patrick, Patrick Battery, Saunders, can you uh, give us some indication of um, what these gangs, a little bit more detail about what's been going on that drew the police to these raids today? Well, uh, sure. As I stated, the criminality pieces are the, the firearms, uh, shootings, drug distribution. Uh, those are the primary issues that, uh, that gave us focus to have a deeper look at to what was going on and to see if there was some type of network and we were able to establish that that was what in fact occurred and, and so we, we commenced the investigation Given based on that. the press conference um, and tomorrow show and tell, um, how much of a dent have you made do you feel that both of these things and how fluid are these... Uh, Projects are they still open? Are you still uh, possibly going to enforce more uh, search warrants and more arrests? Well, we'll never say no to anything. We will follow the evidence. If the evidence leads us to more search warrants, more arrests, then we will certainly do that. I can tell you, though, I'm very satisfied with the work that the men and women have put forward with this investigation. Um, they have put a significant, I, I believe, a significant uh, dent in the violence that has occurred within the city, and I think that we will see the results of that decrease as a result of these arrests. Project Battery links it all to Western Battery. Is that where the name came from? Is that why you're focusing on that? That's project? not to my knowledge, no. Do you know where the names of the projects came from? No, I do not. Uh, we heard of some raids in Montreal as well this morning. Any link there at all? Uh, not to my knowledge, but I, I, I would have to. Tomorrow you can re-ask that question and get the proper answer. Chief, you, you said you wouldn't be surprised about murder charges, but you reference shootings. Um, how prevalent was, were shootings involved in this rival? And, they, and obviously, were they battling each other? Yeah, well, they were rivals, so the, the, the intended targets were each other. And uh, I can tell you that tomorrow there'll be a, a much better drill down on some more of the specifics with the questions that you're asking today. Like today, there's an obligation for us to explain to the members of the community we've, we've used the highest level of force to take down a number of people and people want to know exactly what went on. And this was a streamlined investigation and, and we targeted specific people. And uh, I can tell you that the, the investigations and, the, and today's results, there were no incidents of any kind. So it was done quite seamlessly. And I, I, I do commend the, the collaborative efforts of the agencies. It's something that we're getting better at, the ability of working with other police agencies. Um, I would say over the last 10 years, we've become much better at sharing information and working together as law enforcement agencies. Did officers people, on the ground, sorry, I just want to, do you have a sense of how many officers were involved in the raids today? No, sorry, Sue. Tomorrow we'll, we'll get a more definitive on that. All 50 people facing charges? Yes. Any idea when they'll be up in court? Is that today or? Uh, they will be processed uh, before the courts today, yes. Do you expect criminal organization charges as well then? Absolutely. Any, anybody in particular, do you expect to be charged with instructing for criminal organization? Uh, I, I don't have an answer to that. Are a lot of these people, have they, have they been through the system before? Are you familiar with a lot of the... There will be some people that have been through the system uh, before. This won't be their first time before uh, a justice. Were all the people arrested connected with the gang? Well, all the people will be either connected to the gangs or will be connected to the evidence that we have found as a result of the search warrants that were executed today. So tomorrow there will be more details. Of, I mean, we won't find out today the names of the people charged. You won't be releasing that? It's, tomorrow, uh, Superintendent Kwan will have a, a much more fulsome account as to what was seized and, and names and, and, and a more detailed account as to the mechanics of what led to this particular investigation. Is that in court today? Yes. I'm not going to divulge that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I can't stand up here and say that there's a rivalry, then I'm going to disclose where people are that there's an ongoing rivalry with, so I, I won't be doing that. Sorry, I think, Chief, can you talk about the territory that these gangs held down? Like, where are they located? Where and, and, are that's, and, and that's the interesting piece. I, I, I can say uh, primarily 51 and 14 Division, but I, I can also say that this particular, these particular gangs had a much bigger footprint than, than normal gangs. Um, whenever you attend these large type of takedowns, usually it's within a small geographic area. Today, as you can see, it was right across the city. So that was something that was a little more unique than, than most of the others. Are you saying that, sorry, that their activities spanned throughout the city or that there were members also living outside of Regent Park and Alexander Park? It's a combination of both, yes. So their activities and uh, where they, they uh, resided. Are these considered then still like typical street gangs? Or are we talking like a graduated level here? No, I, I'm, I'm going to very safely say that this was a, a much more graduated level of, of gang subculture activity than we've dealt with in the past. And uh, this seems to be a trend that's ongoing now. Our level of enforcement has increased substantially because of this level of sophistication that has taken place that we've noticed. Are any of those arrested youths? I, I can't tell you that right now, I'm sorry. I'll take two more questions. So can you uh, elaborate a little bit more on that? It sounds like this is more than just gang raid. It, it's bordering a bit on organized crime. Can you talk about the difference between the two? Yeah, I can, uh, I can, but I can very generally talk about it. At, at the end of the day, the, 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 the bigger piece is bringing these folks before the courts and ensuring that we have a fair and proper trial which is why I can't disclose a tremendous amount of information. But what I can say that is in the past with the street gangs, it was uh, commonly associated with this very low level type of organization and structure to it, where just violence was prevalent and nothing else. Uh, now we're starting to see that these gangs have that level of violence. If not, it's increased. But they also have a much stronger level of sophistication, have a much stronger level of organization. And that's something to be concerned with at this point. But we're still ahead of the curve. And, and, and so it's not to raise any alarm. But it's just something that we've noticed recently. What level is the RCMP involved in this? Well, they're law enforcement officers, and, and, and they will work in concert with us in, in any type of investigation. And it goes back to what I said before, that, that now more than ever, we're working so much more collaboratively with all of our agencies, and, and this is just another classic example of that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Acting Chief Mark Saunders. That concludes today's conference.